Hello everyone, I'm Michael Houston, and today's devotion is Psalm 127. It's another fairly short chapter in Psalm, only five verses long, but after reading it, I could almost see how it could be separated into two chapters, which made me want to look into how does this all tie together? Why were two very different subjects combined into this one Psalm? The first two verses describe both the ineffectiveness of work apart from God and how labor is in vain whenever it goes beyond the limits God has set for it. Verses 3 through 5, though, talk about having children, many of them, in fact. Now, it's a little ironic that I'm about to talk about kids or having a bunch of kids when I don't have any myself, but we can just ignore that because this isn't a lesson on raising children. I want to explain how what is needed in the first two verses is simply provided for in the next three verses via children. When men work as referenced in verses 1 and 2, they are striving for wages, not a gift. Wages are what we produce with the work of our hands. Gifts are those things generously given to us by another. Children, verse 3 informs us, are a gift from God and a great reward. In verses 4 and 5, we are taught that children provide us with the very thing for which men strive in vain, a home and security. A man may toil to build a house, but by giving us children, God builds that home. The watchman stands guard to provide security and protection, but the children God gives us provide a greater security. They are described as arrows in the hand of a warrior, Children born in a man's youth are hopefully strong and well-established by the time he has reached old age, and those children can then look after him in that old age. So what I see as the point of the psalm is that the man who puts too much stock in his labor is the man who has failed to understand the grace of God. In his grace, God has provided man with a time of rest and relaxation and has supplied many of our needs through the gift of children. God's gifts are not acquired by extensive efforts, but by resting in God's grace. Without that, our efforts will always be hopeless and never acceptable to God. He has chosen to save us by his grace, not by our works.